Okay, good, war good morning, welcome to Family Math 198. Family Math 198. So today, just for a fun project, and because there was some really cool work done on prime numbers just in the last year, I thought we'd just talk about the history of prime numbers and, yeah. and humans understanding prime numbers. So we're going to go, we're going to start in Greece. We have two mathematicians, Euclid, and how do you say this guy's name? Aristosthenes. Aristosthenes. Okay. Do you know what Euclid did with prime numbers? Mm, no. No? Do you? No. Euclid understood that there are infinitely many prime numbers. This one works better. Okay. Infinitely many. So that's a big step. Yeah. So if you thought prime numbers stop after, you know, 17 or something. They don't. They don't. When do they stop? After infinity. <laughs> they never stop, mm -hmm. which is really amazing. And does anyone remember kind of a sketch of how that proof goes? Well, you say there's a finite number of primes. Okay. Like so. P1, P2, P3, all the way up to Pn. Okay, so I've got n primes. That's it. That's We're just going to assume that's all there is. Yeah. Okay, what do you do now? And then you... You add, you multiply all these primes together, so that way you have a big number that's divisible by all of the primes. You form this new number where I just multiply all of these together, and that number is divisible by all of the primes. Then you add one. Then you add one to it. So that means when you divide by any prime, it's going to have a remainder of one. Right, any prime. We thought these were all the primes. But now turns out we were wrong. Why, why are we wrong? Because... None of these primes go into this. They all leave a remainder of 1. Okay, so what does that mean? That means we just found a new prime. Either we found a new prime or there's some other prime that's divisible by that number. That divides into yeah. this number. Yeah. That divides into this number. So either this number is prime, which means it has no, no divisors other than itself in 1, or there's another prime that we missed but that goes into this number. So our assumption that we could list all the primes is wrong. Is wrong. Okay, so that's cool. And then, uh, can you give me the eraser, please? What did Aristophanes do? The sieve of Aristosthenes. So what is that? What is that sieve? Well, you just you write out a bunch of numbers. Okay. How about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, just for fun. So then you then you go up the list. You cross out all the ones that are divisible by. But well, one doesn't really count. Okay, one doesn't count because one is not a prime. So we're just going to take one off the list. So you, you go up the list and find all of the numbers that are divisible by your finite many, your inf your finite number of primes. Okay, well, we can, we're, what we do is we just start with whatever the first number is on the list that's not circled, and then we circle it. And we cross out on our list all the multiples of that number. Okay. And then we do the next one. Then we just circle the next one and we cross out all the multiples of that number. Oh, 9. Circle. Cross out all the multiples of 5. Circle. So we found. And we two, find some primes. 2, 3, 5, and 7. Yeah, and if we make the, we can make this list as long as we want. And the numbers that are, that are left circled on the list that are not crossed out are primes. Oh. So what's really neat about this is that in ancient Greece, Euclid proved that there was an infinite number of primes, and Aristophanes showed how to find all of them. Cool. So that's 2,500 years ago. Wow. They knew, they knew those two things. Pretty amazing, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go on to the next, the next step. Because although you could find all of them, it's not too efficient yeah. finding them. You can't do this for infinity. Yeah.